76 as head coach, and she has won 799. So a little extra on the line here today for Iowa. We had to remind Lisa that that was indeed a milestone within reach. Her players know all about it. Her team's got the first possession, and Caitlin Clark's got the ball in her hands, guarded by Vanessa De Jesus. Sinano so good on the inside, and Monica Sinano hits from the outside as you take a look at the starting five for Duke. De Jesus will run the point. We'll watch for Cheyenne Day Wilson off the bench, coming off an 8 3 pointer performance last time out of win against Troy. They like to shoot the three. Lexi Gordon's been good on threes. Good fight on the offensive glass by Jade Williams, but. Here comes Iowa, and Clark has got a half a step on the field. One huge key for both of these teams is to take care of the basketball. That's the reason why turnovers can lead to fast-paced offense the other way for both teams. Turnovers have been an issue for Duke so far in this young part of the season. Duke averaging 19 turnovers a game. They had 19 in the last game against Troy. They'll try another three. This one is off the market, rebound by Kate Martin. This is a very familiar starting lineup and a very familiar connection right there with Clark beating Sinano and what a start for Iowa. Those two look for each other so well. We saw an early possession, the pick and roll found Sinano for the free throw line jumper there. Clark finds her again. Sinano at 66% from the field. She was at 67% to lead Division I a year ago. Taylor. Got free from Clark and knocked it down for Duke's first two. Taylor's a really gifted offensive player who can create her own shot. They might need her to do that a little bit more here today. Clark launches well off the mark, and here comes Taylor, who does a little bit of everything. Scoring, rebounding, good on defense, diving on the floor for loose balls. Balagoon. Lost the handle, and there's a turnover for Duke. Into the hands of Gabby Marshall. McKenna Warnock, back to Clark. Clark, beautiful feed. And if it gets in the hands of Sonano, it's going in. It's just going in. And then a turnover. Throughout the course of shoot around this morning, Iowa is going over their pick and roll with Clark and Zanano and how they were going to handle it depending on how the defense defended it. And so far, they've been able to <laughs> uh, handle it really, really well. Now Clark has been well off the mark on a couple of her attempts, but her passes, <laughs> she tries to wake up the hands, shake the head, do whatever it takes. Right here, shot going. just out in transition, and Sonano running the floor, and Clark is going to find her here. Once again, the seal by Sonano inside. When she catches in deep position, forget about it. She's just going to turn and finish. away and gets called for the foul. Good fight by Jade Williams. Chance for a three-point play. Sonano, there's not a whole lot of contact there by the big girl, but good job by Williams to fight, post, and finish. And she'll finish at the free throw line. Warna. Tommy Taiwo on the floor for Iowa. Warnock's been good lately. That one is well off the mark. Well, you know, we talked to Lisa Bluter a little bit about it because they had the COVID pause after November 17th. Was she concerned about rust? They had their first practice Tuesday this week. That was the first time they were all together and had a chance to practice. So We've seen a couple of signs of that when it comes to the shooting, maybe, for Iowa in the early going. Yeah, she said, I'm not worried about our conditioning as much as I'm worried about our timing and our ability to shoot. Really nice job there, delivering the basketball to Williams. Clark back into Sonano, but she can't handle that pass. It's a turnover for Iowa, and Duke has a chance to go in front. And 
an offensive foul called on Duke, so another turnover for the Blue Devils. Just a little dribble handoff, or a handoff into an on-ball screen. Great pick and roll and feed and finish. First foul on Williams, she'll head to the bench, and Anoma Akinbadi James will come on for Duke. Iowa's getting their personnel set right now. They bring Kylie Fierbach on for the first time, sophomore transfer from Iowa State. Another one that gets away. There's Taylor all the way in. Can't finish, but there to clean it up. Alagoon couldn't, though. But you see, much like Iowa, when Duke has turned it over, looking to push the other way, Duke is going to do the same thing. Keep the, pe the tempo fast. A lot balance for Clark. That won't drop. Caitlin Clark, slow start so far for her. 0 for 3 from the field. Nice response, nice response by Duke after Iowa able to get that early lead. Duke's had a couple of opportunities to get their first lead and they've come up empty on a couple of trips. And the Hawkeyes will slow it down. 4-0 on the season. Logan Cook on for Iowa. And Iowa out of sync. You mentioned the timing, the rhythm. It's a good start for Iowa, but little bumpy since. Back and forth they go on the inside. Sonano off to a good start. The feed from Clark. But the answer, as Rebecca mentioned, from Duke, one point game in the early going. Well, quite the basketball journey for Kara Lawson, of course, as a player. Three Final Four appearances with the Lady Balls had great success at the WNBA and then at the coaching level, professional work, working with Marcus Smart and the Celtics for one year. Great success with Team USA and the three-on-three -three winning gold at the Olympics in 2021. She had a little stint sitting next to you at times, I believe, <laughs> through the years, right? I was sitting <laughs> next to her. Ah, uh, yes, that's right. <laughs> that's right. But some great success as a player. And now as the head coach at Duke, her team has the lead over ninth-ranked Iowa. And this has been a great response by the Blue Devils after the quick start for the Hawkeyes. Iowa answers right back, and that's Martin rolling to the basket for her first two. Well, Cheyenne Day Wilson wasted no time introducing herself to the folks here at Cameron Indoor. And now she's added an assist here in her opening minute of play. Day Wilson is a really exciting and dynamic player. She's got quickness. She has tremendous confidence in her three-point shot, as she should in her last game, 8 of 10 from deep, but will create for her teammates as well. She is terrific energy coming in off the bench for Duke. And now Iowa going without Caitlin Clark. Slow start from the field for her, missing her first three field goal attempts. Martin has the shot blocked by Celeste Taylor. And an unforced error there for Duke. A little quick on the sideline. They turned it over. Fifth turnover for the Blue Devils. I think overall, Duke has done a nice job defensively. They had been handling dribble penetration well until that possession. They've done a good job with the way Iowa likes to pass. And cut. Body James with the rebound and then another turnover on the other end just stepping out of bounds was Taylor. Cheyenne Gay Wilson just here coming in, stepping into the three. She's got a quick trigger and then look, draws two defenders, able to deliver the dime right on the money. Here she is in the open court. Trying to weave through traffic, finds Taylor, open three. Long rebound. Clark back into the game for Iowa, and she's got it. And she's got Warnock cutting to the basket for two. That always up. If you run the floor and you're open, Caitlin Clark will find you. Wilson, the freshman from.
from Toronto who went for 26 against Troy last time out, including a freshman record, eight three-pointers. Akandani James sticks with it for another two. Yeah, she's a workhorse. She's a workhorse on the glass, and she will continue to take it at you. And a mistake there for Iowa. Lisa Bluter was given instructions from the sideline. Warnock was looking at it the whole time, but Duke can't make them pay for it. And they turn it over again. It'll be Iowa basketball. 27th annual Jimmy V Classic back at Madison Square Garden Tuesday night on ESPN and also the ESPN app. 7 p.m. Texas Tech tips against Tennessee. And then it'll be old conference rivals on a very familiar court. Sixth ranked Villanova taking on the Bayheim brothers and Syracuse to donate to the V Foundation. Go to V.org. Well, great pushback by Duke. They're on top here, but. You have to think they would be in a better position were it not for the turnovers yeah. here in the early going. It's the same problem they've had. Exactly. This is not a new a new problem. Duke uh, just gets in trouble taking care of the basketball. Seven turnovers so far in this game. And this is a play that Iowa likes to run to clear out the backside so they can direct entry into Sonato. Because Bruder called her what? A walking bucket. <laughs> you got to get her the basketball a little bit more. Came in averaging better than 16 points a game. First team all Big Ten last year was on the all tourney team after scoring 107 points in the Big Ten tournament. Tournament record for points scored. I will start in a box set, and they have the left side empty out to the right, and then they look for the direct entry over the top. Again, it's an auto catch is inside. It's going to be quick, and it's going to be effective. She does not dribble the ball. She just goes straight up with it. Efficiency. Foul on Warnock. Her first. Jesus lost the handle. Duke sticks with it. And freshman Lee Volker gets her first points. Caitlin Clark. That's tipped out of bounds by Taylor, who got a hand on it. So Monica Sinano has 10 of the 14 for Iowa. Caitlin Clark has yet the score, 0 for 3 from the field. I care Lawson defensively is going to play the percentages. Don't look for, for Duke to start double teaming inside. He would rather give up a 2 than give up a deep 3. Good job there by the freshman, Dave Wilson, defensively against Clark. Wilson will take a tough shot. And on the drive, it's Celeste Taylor. Feed into Martin. Taylor couldn't get there in time, and Martin's got the easy two. Yeah, you can't let up. You can't let up. The way Iowa likes to pass and cut, pass and cut, because the one time you do and they get a step on you and it turns into an easy bucket. Hey, wait, wait, wait. At 12. Okay. As expected, both teams shooting well here in the first quarter. Duke at 53%, Iowa at 50%. Wilson with the shot clock down to three. She's a freshman. Just going to remind you once in a while here, she's a freshman, but she's playing with a ton of confidence. And after a slow start, how about that finish for Duke? Up by four after one. Iowa took the first shot early, but Duke has responded well. Their backcourt attacking the basket. Celeste Taylor in for two. The freshman comes in. All right, I got you as well. <laughs> we got a good one here. Welcome back to the Big Ten ACC Challenge on ESPN. Entertaining one in the early going between Duke playing at Cameron Indoor against ninth-ranked Iowa. See the ACC in control and Duke with some good responding there in that first quarter after falling behind early 8-2. Caitlin Clark been a struggle from the field so far for her. Two points on one of five shooting. But she'll keep shooting. Oh, she won't stop shooting. She won't stop shooting. Shoot or shoot. Yeah, and, and nor should she because at some point those are going to start to drop. And now you see that Iowa has gone into a zone defense and another turnover by the Duke Blue Devils. Duke had seven in the first quarter as Gabby Marshall gets the steal for Iowa. Warnock 
Drives on the freshman Volker. Got the hand in there. Got the steal. Good defensive play. Six turnover for Iowa. To Jesus, 4-3. To Jesus is a sophomore because she played four games last year, but they're treating her like a freshman, and you've got a couple of freshmen on the floor right now for Duke running the show. And Carol Lawson was talking about, you know, that very fact I basically have two freshman point guards, and it's going to take them a, a bit of time to learn exactly how I want them to play the position. Martin with a turnaround. Good start for her. Came in averaging six points a game. She's got six right now. Just to remind you, Duke last year played four games before their season was stopped because of COVID-19. So that was on Christmas Day last year. To Jesus. Can't get it, but on the offensive glass, Duke with a second chance, and it'll be Duke basketball. Three conference champions will be crowned Saturday on ABC. Big 12 going first at noon. Ninth ranked Baylor, fifth ranked Oklahoma State. Houston and Cincinnati up next for the American title and the ACC championship. They'll have Pittsburgh taking on Wake Forest. Full day of football on ABC in the ESPN app. One app, one tap. One thing, too, with Caitlin Clark, she will keep shooting, but she will keep piling up the assists, and she's got another one. Sinano, they had to make a correction on the scoring. That's now double figures for Monica Sinano. She's got 10. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful post move. Again, she doesn't put the ball on the deck. She doesn't dribble. She just does the step through and is able to clear space and get a good look. Uh, Green on the pull up. Won't drop another offensive rebound for Duke. Last couple of possessions, Iowa has gone into that zone, but they're having difficulty rebounding out of it. A couple of offensive boards now for Duke going against it. I have picked it Greeny with the hoop. That's another miss for Clark. To Jesus. Dave Wilson trying to get it through a lot of hands, and it was knocked out of bounds by Iowa. Three subs coming in now for Duke. Gordon, Williams, and Taylor coming on for the Blue Devils. Extended <laughs> one for Dave Wilson. Couldn't get that one to drop, and there is offensive rebound number six for the Blue Devils. Well, Duke is a really good offensive rebounding team. 43% in terms of offensive rebound percentage according to her hoop stats. That's ninth in the country. They attack the glass. Ninth turnover for the Blue Devils. Last touch by Sinano, and guess who had a hand in there? It was Dave Wilson, the freshman on the defensive end with the strip. Yeah, that was a nice job by Dave Wilson to come in and help out right there. Because if she's not there, that's going to be another two points for Sinano. Dave Wilson is the top freshman scorer in the ACC, a little bit above 12 points a game. Number two among freshmen in assists per game. Picked up the ACC Freshman of the Week award this week. So now with the defensive rebound for Iowa. Clark will try to extend the range. 0 for 3 outside the three-point line down for Caitlin Clark. And that's a little out of control. A battle for the loose ball won by Iowa. Clark. It's called for the offensive foul. Yeah, that's a good call. That's a good call. She lowered her shoulder. She's the one who initiated the contact. She was hoping to get herself to the free throw line. And right here, shoulder's going to come down. Boom, right into Taylor. Nice job. Celeste Taylor does that really well, drawing charges. And Kara Lawson, I mean, she told us one of the keys was taking care of the basketball. They have not done that effectively. The second key was we cannot put Iowa at the free throw line because they are so good when they get there. They have done a tremendous job. Zero free throws right now for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Iowa through four games this season has got 20 points per game from the free throw line. So Kara Lawson's got to love that piece of it. Turnovers, as Rebecca mentioned. Hasn't been great, but she's played a lot of players here so far. Her team is now on top by five, four minutes into the second quarter, and Caitlin Clark heads back to the bench. Lisa Blue tends to give her her rest around the TV timeouts, knowing one is coming at the under five-minute mark. 
Tywo on the floor, and here's Martin. Marshall. Drive. Good little fake by Marshall. Great recovery by Celeste Taylor. Taylor just does everything well on both ends of the floor. And a great motor. She continues to work hard. Marshall tried to take it back. Gordon, good shooter. Not this time. Last possession, I thought Sanana was open and that you could direct entry to her from the right side. Marshall did not do that. Continue to give her touches. Jade Williams working in the post, trying to deny Sanano. No denying that, though. Again, just direct entry. I mean, she's been unstoppable when you've been able to get her the basketball there, so just continue to give it to her. I don't know how you define unstoppable, Rebecca, but six for six from the field, is that qualifying? It does. It okay. does. It does, sure. yeah. Good heavens, another turnover. And then Iowa with another turnover. They've been far from perfect. Iowa's got nine turnovers. Duke has 11 turnovers. Duke is on top at five-minute media timeout as you're watching Be Week on ESPN. All right, everybody, Kaylin Clark is one for seven so far. The teams have combined for 20 turnovers. But again, talking about supporting cast, how about the Duke supporting cast? 13 bench points so far, and Iowa hasn't gotten anything from their bench. Yeah, I mean, and we've seen it all season long. In this early part of the season out of Duke, Carolossa will go to her bench, and, I, and she likes to place the fa fast-paced play, another turnover. She likes the fast-paced play, and you can do that when you can continue to cycle bodies in and out. So they've done a really good job, Duke's bench has. Clark back onto the floor, approaching four minutes to go, first half. Dave Wilson, a little off balance, but she can make anything. Yeah, just a little screen, and the defense gets hung up for a second. We saw her, and when they had the shoot around today, what did she work on that for about another half hour? Yeah, after, everybody yeah, everybody else left, went to class, whatever. She was out there working hard on her game. Get it, and the rebound to Williams. Really nice hustle there by Caitlin Clark. Results in another turnover by Duke. She's trying to jump the route. She gets her hand on it, and so does Taylor, the last one to touch it. Caitlin Clark and Celeste Taylor were teammates in 2019. Under-19 team that won gold for Team USA. Tomorrow night, ESPN kick off your weekend with an NBA doubleheader. 7.30 p.m., Joel Embiid and the Sixers taking on Trey and the Hawks. And then the 18-3 and three Suns make the trip to take on Steph and the Warriors. Coverage begins with NBA Countdown presented by Mountain Dew at 7 Eastern. Paolo Bancaro and his Duke teammates are around. So, you know, who's going to be – there could be a number one pick in the building here tonight. Taylor, that goes for two more for Celeste Taylor. And important to note, Sonato picked up her second foul on Alice's possession, a push off that I don't know that I agree with it. So she is off the floor. She has been the one super consistent offensive threat for Iowa so far in this game. That could be big. That's another good defensive play by freshman Lee Volker for Duke. So it's not just the points, there's Contributions for the bench on the defensive end, too. Yep. There is Sonano, as Rebecca mentioned, two personal fouls, 12 points for her, six for six from the field. Gordon off the window for two. First points for Lexi Gordon, who's averaging nearly 13 points a game. And how about this at Cameron Indoor Stadium? They're making some noise as the Blue Devils are up nine. Seen a pretty good student turnout here today. Cameron Crazy's making some noise. They know that the number nine team of the country is here, that one of the very best players in the country and Caitlin Clark is here. They've 
been riding her just a little bit because she's had a cold shooting night so far and she'll bring it up now for Iowa who took a timeout after falling behind by nine. Clark has the five assists. Working well with Sonano who is on the bench right now with the two personal fouls. Shot clock down to four. And a blocking foul called. Addison O'Grady, the freshman, has come into the game for Iowa with Sonano in the foul trouble. And on the drive, she will get Iowa's first free throw attempts of the game. I thought that was really good defense, too, by Duke. You know, they kind of went hard on, on the on-ball screen at Clark, made her make a decision. The weak side was there, but maybe just not in time. Foul on Lexi Gordon, her first. Sonano watches from the bench. Addison O'Grady, freshman from Colorado. Playing on average 10 minutes a game. Averaging four points a game. And that brings Iowa within seven as we approach two minutes to go in the first half. Heat check. Still hot. Double figures for Wilson. Again, she knocked down eight threes in this building last time out. Went for 26 points, and here she comes, showing her speed and in transition. The Blue Devils up by 10. Gordon can't make it 13. But how about Day Wilson on that last possession? The offense had kind of broken down. They hadn't found anything. And she's a type of play player who can create. We've seen her do it off the bounce for herself, off the bounce for teammates. Ooh, nice move inside, though, by, <laughs> by Caitlin Clark on Day Wilson. How did she get behind me? Oh, that's right. It's Caitlin Clark, who's pretty crafty and creative to get shots off. Four points now for Clark. But Day Wilson in this first half has been the most impactful guard on the floor. Gordon, that won't drop, and Clark in the final minute will bring it up for Iowa. She'll try a deep three, still trying to find the mark. And Day Wilson was fouled in the backcourt. So when the Duke offense breaks down, what are you going to do? Well, if you have a play player who can create like this, I mean, that was deep. That was a deep three, and she's able to hit it and then on the other side. Oh, give and go and bounce around <laughs> the defense. Nice finish there by Clark. I think they're calling an intentional foul here on that foul in the backcourt. Ooh. Day Wilson was, yeah, the officials are talking about it right now. Let's. I thought it was just a good foul to give to slow things down. I mean, this isn't the WNBA. You don't have a clear path foul or anything like that. Yeah, that's, that's just a foul. That's just a foul to give. I don't agree with that at all. They had a short discussion about it, and Lexi Gordon will go to the free throw line. Like you Mr. see that? First, yeah, you see Caitlin Clark. No way. That was just smart players do that all the time in the WNBA. If there's a foul to give, if you want to limit the other team from getting a fast break, you just take the foul. So Clark picks up her second personal foul. She'll go to the bench with under a minute to go. Gordon ended up missing both free throws, so. That's been another issue for Duke this season. Yeah. Only a 65% free throw shooting team. They were 10 for 25 in their last game from the line. Step back three. Not everything's going down for Dave Wilson, but it's coming pretty close. Let's see what Iowa does here with Clark on the bench. They go back to Martin, who's been good here in the first half. I think there, though, you take a little bit more time. Use the entirety of the shot clock. We Duke, you know, less than five seconds to get something going the other end. Gordon down to two, down the one. With the left beat the buzzer ninth 
ranked Iowa trailing unranked undefeated Duke. Kara Lawson, the look hasn't changed, but she has got to be thrilled. Duke right down to the buzzer. Gordon beating the buzzer. Great first half here. You see the numbers for Caitlin Clark, four points in the first half, very low scoring game for Iowa so far. Taylor with the six points. And the big story, Cheyenne Day Wilson in that first half. And this is one of the sets that was effective for Iowa in the first half as well. We talked about it, the box set, they empty out the left side of the floor and this is so they can get direct or entry into Sonano. Here she catches, she gets fouled, she gets to the free throw line. Foul on Jade Williams, her second personal foul. Iowa just two trips to the free throw line in the first half. Sonano had to sit after picking up two personal fouls. Was perfect from the field in the first half. Six for six for 12 points. Both teams were efficient. You know, both teams shot in the upper 40s in terms of their percentage. It's just they were too many turnovers. You talk about Duke's turnovers. Iowa's turnovers hurt them more. Duke, Duke had points off of Iowa's turnovers, whereas Iowa wasn't able to get easy looks off of Duke's. Yeah, you're right. Ten points for Duke off of the 11 Iowa turnovers in the first half, and Iowa scored just four points off of the 12 Duke turnovers. Taylor works with the screen. Can't hit. Another offensive rebound. This time with Lexi Gordon on the inside. Offensive rebounds a big story in this game as well. Seven offensive boards for Duke, zero for Iowa. Clark takes it at Williams, playing with the two fouls, but lid still on the basket for Caitlin Clark. Gordon sets for three. Clark was fouled by DeJesus. It'll be Iowa basketball on the baseline. So if you're just joining us, Iowa, the ninth-ranked team in the country, their last game was November 17th. They played only four games. They had COVID issues within the program. They missed the trip to Cancun. They missed a game with Drake. So that's three games that were canceled. They didn't have their first practice until Tuesday, and you can't help but think that's having an impact on their rhythm, on their shooting, and just how they played here as the number nine team in the country. Yeah, without question it's had an impact, but so has Duke's defense. Duke has done a really nice job being active and making things a little more difficult for Iowa than they would normally be. And that is to take nothing away from Duke because they've been good on the offensive glass. They have turned turnovers for Iowa into points. They've got great production off the bench. They have come ready to play here in front of a loud crowd at Cameron Indoor. We've seen Iowa miss a number of layups, a number of really good looks inside, just in the last couple of possessions, but throughout the course of the game. Iowa came in averaging 88 points a game. Prolific scoring team, we saw that last year. Taylor too strong, good job by Williams to keep it alive. Williams again, that one's blocked out of bounds, they'll stay with Duke, but just more good work on the offensive glass for the yeah. Blue Devils. Yeah, they're attacking and they're active, and even if they can't corral the rebound themselves, players are tipping it out so that their teammates can get possession of it. Entry to Taylor with the reverse. Eight points for Taylor, had four rebounds and two block shots in the first half as well. This match is the largest lead of the game for the Blue Devils, up by ten. Clark, wide open look. Warnock got the first offensive rebound of the game for Iowa. Sinano got the second. Or that one won't drop. Again, on that possession. That possession, two missed pretty good looks for Iowa in the paint. Beautiful drive to the basket. That's Lexi Gordon. Marsh 
Marshall wanted to give it back to Sinano, but turned it over. Taylor, three on two for Duke. Yeah, this Magluder might need to take a timeout, absolutely. Duke is making things very difficult for Iowa. They're defending, they're active, balls rolling off the rim. It's been a night of frustration for Lisa Bluter and her team. And the energy the other way is turning into buckets for the Blue Devils. Go had a triple-double in her last game, but Caitlin Clark just cannot find a bucket here against Duke. Yeah, she has really struggled to score, and a lot of these opportunities are shots that she typically makes. You know, I think Duke has done a tremendous job overall with their team defense. I think Caitlin Clark, a lot of this are just shots she normally sees fall through, and she hasn't today. Only 2 of 13. I think the COVID pause for her certainly has had an impact. 0 for 6 from outside the three-point line for Clark. Shot 40% as a freshman, led Division One in three-pointers made. Now, you still get the feeling, though, that no matter how off she's been here today, if she makes one, more will follow. Sinano on the inside, tough two. Same play, same play, I love it. Box set, clear out the left side, over the top to Sinano. That time she did have to dribble. I think that might have been the first play this game where she's actually had to dribble she the basketball. She showed her handle. She yeah. just wanted to show you she had a little That's bit of That's right, I could do a one bounce and finish. <laughs> 16 points now for Sinano. That ended an eight nothing run for the Blue Devils. And here comes Iowa off the miss. Martin, Warnock, knocked away by Gordon. Cheyenne Day Wilson into the game, had such a great first half. Balagoon, who didn't score in the first half, has five here in the second half. I'm impressed by her decision making here today. You know, she got two feet in the paint, got the defender to take a step in, and gave a pass right on the money to her teammate for three. Martin cuts to the basket. That won't drop. Frustrations mounting for the entire Iowa team as Gordon tracks it down in the corner. Dave Wilson facing a good defender in Marshall. Switch on Clark. And a foul on Clark. That's her third. Three personal fouls on Caitlin Clark. It's all Duke right now at Cameron Indoor Stadium. 15-point lead for the Blue Devils, knocking it down inside and out against ninth-ranked Iowa. Why there's survival odds. And the reason why there's survival odds is because someone beat it. We need your help. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. So don't give up on me. It is V Week at ESPN, and our partnership with the V Foundation highlights the urgent need for cancer research and the elimination of racial disparities in cancer outcomes. You can learn more and help support by visiting v.org slash donate. 100% of your donation goes directly to cancer research. Foundation's endowment covers administrative expenses. There is Bucky Waters, former Duke coach, of course, longtime broadcaster, V Foundation board member, Emeritus, who's here tonight watching his beloved Blue Devils go up by 15 over the ninth-ranked team of the country, the Iowa Hawkeyes. What a performance it has been so far for Duke. I mean, it hasn't always been pretty, but they're figuring out a way, and they've done a great job on the defensive end of the floor. They've coughed it up too much in terms of their turnovers, but they've been able to get to the bucket when they need to. They get to make a couple free throws there, but they've been impressed with their resilience. Well, how did Kara Lawson put it? I don't want to coach robots, I want to coach players. Players are going to make mistakes. How are you going to react to it? And we've seen this Duke team get contributions from so many different players on both ends of the floor. And now they're up by 16, the biggest lead of the game. And something to keep in mind, too, this is Duke's seventh game of the season, and they came into this game 6-0. and And they've been in a variety of situations. They've been in games that came down to the wire, which it did against Alabama. They've been in games where they were down at the half and had to fight back. Iowa won 
all four of their games by at least 20 points. It's it's been a different um, you know variety of experiences for both of these teams early in the season. That Alabama game, it was Dave Wilson who made some big winning plays down the stretch to knock off the Crimson Tide. Tough three for Clark. That won't drop. Warnock. Offensive rebound. Iowa doing a better job on the offensive boards, but they missed the bunny. Warnock all along underneath, and nothing will drop for the Hawkeyes here at Cameron. Yeah, lots of missed bunnies so far. Volker, she's played really well, and she'll learn the trip to the free throw line. You can tell she's a player who's going to be able to do a little bit of everything. We've seen that here today. I've just been really impressed with the depth of Duke, the contributions we've seen from a variety of players off the bench. Sedano checks out. 19 bench points for the Blue Devils compared to two for Iowa. So where is Iowa's offense going to come from? Without Sonano on the floor, I mean, this is an Iowa offense that's predicated on having an anchor inside and then spacers around her. Players who can drain from three, they get penetration and kick and, and get those outside shooters good looks. Well, they haven't hit a three today, 0 for 9. And that lets the defense suck in a little bit. It takes away you know, some of the power of that dribble penetration. Now, of those nine three-pointers, I can think of just one, maybe the last Clark one that was kind of contested. They've had open looks, and yeah. this is a team that makes threes all the time. And Duke off the turnover. Can't score, but it's last touch by Clark. And the Blue Devils will hold on to it. How about Day Wilson, though? Just picking Clark's pocket. Yeah, this is a young player I cannot wait to continue to watch. Watch her grow throughout the course of this season as, as she, and as she matures. Volker. Rebound for Clark. Day Wilson played 14 Canada in the U19 Worlds. Was really good, too, at 18 points a game. Was a late commitment to Duke because she was originally committed to Syracuse, but in August ended up with Kara Lawson's team. I mean, a true difference maker. She has been. Akabadi James picked up her first personal. Another tough one. That's Akabadi James there defensively for Duke. I mean, you just see the difference. You see the difference for Duke. I'm sorry, for Iowa in terms of what they've been able to do from three. Duke at least has been able to make a couple of timely ones. One thing we talked about with Lisa Bluter, you see that 33%. That's not a good number for Iowa. They were around 41% for the season last year. She thought the three-point shot was a little off for her team, but this is something completely different for them. Finally, one drops for Iowa. Their first three of the night after missing their first nine three-point attempts. That won't drop and it's Clark with another rebound. Clark with the push. Four <laughs> two. <laughs> All right. All right, Caitlin Clark, is this the beginning of something? Let's see. Five quick points for Caitlin Clark. She missed her first seven three-point attempts before knocking down the three, got the rebound. Went the distance to get the two to bring Iowa within 13. Two and a half to go into third quarter. Tough pass for Duke's Finkley Guidi to handle. And Iowa will have possession. Caitlin Clark sees a three go down. And then now here, she's looking to draw some contact still. I don't know how it, she's able to finish it. But sometimes all you need to see is one or two go in. And then the rest start to fall. That's exactly what she's seen. She's seen one and two go in in the last two shots. And now she's trying again from three. Not this time. Gordon. Clark pulled up a little bit. Remember, playing with the three fouls. Battle inside. One again by Duke. It's Taylor with the putback. She's into double figures now at 10. Good answer back the other way. And the foul. Sonano with the and one. 
Just such a great connection between Caitlin Clark and Monica Sinano. But how about the big girl running the floor, beating the Duke defenders down? It was not an easy catch and gather, but here she gets it. All right, well, you see your dribble? She needed the dribble on that one. She's like, yeah, give me an in one. Just a rhythm dribble. <laughs> oh, that's a rhythm dribble. I think that was like, I better not. Travel dribble. <laughs> All right, so how is Duke going to respond here? Because this has been a bit of a push we see from Iowa. De Jesus, the Williams, open look for three. Jay Wilson with the response. Throws a kiss to the crowd. That's the one player you cannot leave open if you're Iowa. Clark can't get it, tried to bat it away, and did to Sinano. Martin open three. That's good. First points of the second half for co-captain Kate Martin. Dave Wilson. Batted to Clark. Going out in the space for Martin. Takes it out. Gordon off. That's a foul. Lexi Gordon takes the contact for Duke. Back the other way we go in a 12-point game. 27th annual Jimmy B Classic back at MSG Tuesday night on ESPN and also on the ESPN app. Texas Tech and Tennessee gets it going at 7 o'clock, and then it's Villanova and Syracuse. Great throwback game at the Garden to donate to the V Foundation. Go to V.org. 16 turnovers now for Iowa. Williams on the post up. The beautiful feed underneath to De Jesus for two. Day Wilson with good decision making there, moving the ball around. The previous possession, I thought it was a forced drive by her. That time, better patience. Duke gets a good look. They are an unselfish team that moves and cuts and shares the basketball. Speaking of which, that's Martin on the cut to the basket. The feed from Sinano and a trip to the free throw line coming up for Iowa. Well, I think it's a really good response by Duke. We saw that right in the opening minutes of the game when Iowa jumped out to a six-point lead. Duke fought back. Duke was up by four at the end of the first quarter. Up by eight at halftime. Clark makes a couple of baskets, but Duke came up with a couple of key plays here in the last minute or so. Twelve points for Mark. Wilson. Duke on the move now with six to go on the shot clock. And then a mistake there. Williams threw it to where Wilt Day Wilson was. I think Day Wilson was doing the right thing too. She was cutting back door because she saw that it was open. So it looks like Day Wilson will shadow Caitlin Clark up the floor here with 7.1 to go in the quarter. I know they want to get it back in the hands of Clark. They do. Clark for three. And a rebound for Duke. And Duke ends up outscoring Iowa in the third quarter, 21-16. Duke has done such a great job whenever Iowa has made a push. Day Wilson has been phenomenal. The freshman blowing kisses off the bench and then the unselfish play. Kara Lawson likes what she sees. So many great memories and more to come this year and some memories being made here for the fans at Cameron Indoor Stadium. The last game that Duke played last year was December 9th. They lost to Louisville and then it was official on Christmas Day that their season was done after four games because of COVID-19. Duke has now played six games. This is game number seven. They're undefeated, and they are 10 minutes away from pulling a major upset over the 10th ranked, ninth ranked team in the country, a top 10 team 
in Iowa. Early turnover for Duke. You can see this season, unranked teams have, have not had success against top 10 teams. 0 and 47. But Celeste Taylor takes Duke one step closer to getting one in the win column. Twelve points for Taylor. Dave Wilson leading the way for Duke with 14. Caitlin Clark's been held to nine points on four of 19 shooting, one of 10 from outside the three-point line. So Iowa trying to find contributions from others. While their All-American struggles. First points of the second half for Warnock. She's got four in the game. Jesus on the pull up. A couple possessions ago with Iowa in that zone. They were able to get Duke to turn it over on the pass there. De Jesus handled it well, got a good look right at the free throw line area. Cut on the dribble. Should get this one to go into double figures now with 11. orchestrating from the sideline, understanding time and score. Wanting her team to be in the right spot. It's okay to take time off the shot clock. Williams trying it from the outside, but again, another offensive rebound for Duke. Balagoon with seven all in the second half. Yeah, Caitlin Clark's got to corral that rebound, especially when so much time went off the shot clock. First miss. She was eight for eight. with 19, Martin with 12, Clark with 11. Williams, offensive rebound. And get that put back and the rebound for Warnock. Marshall. Clark defended by Taylor. Steps back for the three. Martin hustles into the corner. Marshall too strong. Knock out of the hands of Sinano and controlled by DeJesus. And Carol Lawson tells her to slow things down and we'll call it out as we go to 640 to go in the fourth. DeJesus dish as she was knocked off balance. I don't think Iowa can, can stay in this zone. Duke's taking too much time off the clock, still able to score off of dribble penetration. Clark on the drive for two more. Up to 13 points now for Caitlin Clark. After scoring just four in the first half. Here's Clark inside of six to go. Clark splits defenders, tacks the basket for two more. And a timeout is called by Duke. We'll take it as well with 5.49 to go here in the fourth quarter. Can Duke pull off the upset here at Cameron Indoor? Vanessa De Jesus and the Blue Devils up by 13 in the fourth. Got to work hard if you can knock off the number nine team in the country, and Duke has been doing that on the offensive glass. Yeah, it's been one of the difference makers and separators so far for the Blue Devils in this game. 15 offensive rebounds, six different players have gotten to the offensive glass. It's translated into 12 second chance points. And we've seen it on a single possession. They'll get multiple offensive boards. Tremendous energy by not only their bigs, but their guards have gotten in there as well. Williams with four offensive rebounds out of her seven total. She came into this game in the last 
stretch of games with more offensive rebounds and defensive rebounds. So that's nothing new for her, but it's been contagious. The entire team's been getting it done, and now Duke trying to put this one away. Came off of Gordon, but teammate Akabadi James is there in the right place at the right time, and here's a rebound for Warnock. You know Iowa can score quickly, and Martin can't get it there. Sinano. Second chance here for Iowa. A couple possessions in a row where Iowa gets a stop and gets a run out. The first one they were able to make the layup. This one they were not able to. But that's where it's going to start, on the defensive end, trying to get that stop. Which oh. has been a challenge for Iowa. They have not been a very good defensive team. In the words of Lisa Bluter, we were horrible on defense last year. They think they're improved. They're going to have to be great here in the final five minutes if they're going to have a comeback. But Iowa typically a really good offensive team. Yeah. They've missed a ton of layups here today. They've missed a bunch of threes that they would normally make. Even that shot by Clark. How many times did we see a shot like that go in and then she'd get the three-point play at the free throw line? Instead, it'll be two free throws here for an 89% free throw shooter. Foul on Dave Wilson. That's her second. Seventeen now for Caitlin Clark. Duke Smart walking it up the floor. Make will make Iowa work defensively. Work for a good shot. And a foul called on Caitlin Clark, and she comes up limping. I think she got a knee to the quad. Charlie Horse, and she signals back to the bench, I'm fine, I'm fine. She looks fine, doesn't she? <laughs> She's, She's like, no, I'm not, I'm not coming out, coach. Well, four fouls may be the reason that she comes out. Yeah, she, uh, yeah, she's trying to fight over the screen. She will head down to the end of the bench. We'll keep an eye on her. Off to the bench with the four personal fouls. Duke did a good job, as you pointed out, Rebecca, in the third quarter, they take, took pretty good care of the basketball. They're going to have to do more of that here in the fourth quarter. And again, that's been a problem for the Blue Devils with the turnovers. So there they work on Clark as Iowa tries to mount a comeback here at Cameron Indoor. Ten on the shot clock. Plenty of time here, but... Offense a little stuck here for the Hawkeyes. Off to Martin, has to try a tough shot. You know, uh, it will be Duke basketball. The offense was stuck, but the defense stayed disciplined. That entire possession, they stayed in their stance, they stayed down, didn't let Iowa get anything. After a quick massage session <laughs> at the end of the bench, Caitlin Clark's back into the game. Four minutes to go. You do just want to take care of the ball, take the air out of the ball, make Iowa work, and find a good shot. Every shot's a good shot for freshman Cheyenne <laughs> Terry Wilson. She blew kisses to the other side of the arena earlier. Now she's blowing kisses to this side. Sinano, that won't drop. Taylor swoops in for the loose ball. Taylor. Rebound to Martin. Here's Clark. Pull up for three. Stores her hands up in the air like saying, come on, that didn't go. One thing we've seen with Caitlin Clark, she will let you know how she feels. Everything bouncing Duke's way right now. Back out to a 16-point lead. That right there tells you Caitlin Clark was pretty wide open for a three, and she didn't even look to take it. Foul on Warnock. Well, she didn't want to neglect one side of the 
crowd here at Cameron Indoor, so you're going to blow kisses. This side, too. Here they come. Here they come. I got kisses for everybody. Wow, how good has she been? How good has she been here today? Overall, really good decision making. She's hit, hit some big shots. She is brings tremendous energy off the bench for Duke. 17 points, four rebounds, four assists, four steals for the freshman from Toronto. Gordon, nice little fake to get free for three. Clark will track it down, 2.15 to go. Clark to the basket, this one drops. 19 for Caitlin Clark. Duke walking up the court, and they'll take time off the clock. Lead it with a 14 point lead. Ballagoon has to try to get out of trouble, but she stepped on the baseline, so it will be Iowa basketball, but just 1.43 to go here in the fourth quarter. Sports Center with SVP coming up next. Suns looking for win number 19, going for 18, rather. Cowboys and Saints, and the Week 14 winners all coming up. Three-pointer knockdown by Warnock, and a timeout called by Iowa. Just the third three-pointer knocked down by Iowa tonight. On average, through their first four games this year, they're making eight a game, and we saw how prolific they were from outside the three-point line last year, knocking down 41% of their threes. See Kara about Kara Lawson about as animated as we've seen her all game long because she can she knows that 11 point lead isn't safe with 136 to go. But I tell you what, if Duke holds on to to win this game, it's important for a couple of reasons. One, not only because they'll be in a top 10 opponent in Iowa, but all these players for Duke come into this game 6-0. and All right, coach, we see what you're doing. We, we've seen it work against this other caliber of team. And if they can get this win, it just builds a level of trust with the players, with their coach, with the system, with what they're trying to do every day to, to get better. And, uh, oh, I've just been really impressed with Duke's resilience, what they've when Iowa's gone on a couple of runs, they've been able to answer. They've played pretty smart basketball. Turnovers, of course, have been an issue, but overall have looked really good. How important is it for Duke, too, because so many players have had a hand in what we're seeing right now, an 11-point lead with 136 to go. That helps with the buy-in if everybody's getting a chance to contribute. It's certainly a lot more fun when you walk away from a game and feel like you've contributed. And Duke has had a lot of players who've not only come in, but contributed in some way. On the glass, offensive glass as well. Bench points, 27 off the bench for Duke. Day Wilson was 17 of the 27. Will we have an unranked team knock off a ranked team? Caitlin Clark with the four fouls goes to the bench. And there is the foul given by Marshall. Great strategy because we talked about it earlier. Duke is a poor to very poor free throw shooting team. You just got to get yourself to the point where they're in the bonus. 13 fouls. Marshall's got to get up and give up another foul, which she will. There's number four. Dave Wilson, 50% on the season from the free throw line. Only 9 of 18. Thrown into Williams. 5 of 10 from the free throw line on the season. Again, Rebecca touched on it before. This has been a struggle in the early going for Duke. What they've done at the free throw line, 65%. They could have put Troy away much earlier. Their last game, they were 10 of 25 from the free throw line. Clark will come back in because, again, playing with the four fouls, can't have her out there to give a foul. She has nothing to give. Jade Williams, seven points, seven rebounds. Give her one more point. Iowa got a box out here because Duke has been tremendous on the offensive glass. No need. So Gordon will come out of the game. 
And Lee Volker will come back in as Duke brings some pressure into the backcourt, try to slow things down here for Iowa. Clark defended by the freshman. And a bump and one. Foul on Day Wilson. Clark with a chance for a three-point play. I thought Caitlin Clark might pull up for the three, but she understands it hasn't been her night from deep, so a little hesitation. Change of pace, gets the and one. Twenty-two points now for Caitlin Clark, 18 in the second half. She'll go back to the bench with the four fouls. Timeout not or the substitution not only gets her out of the game, it lets Iowa set up their full court pressure. Precious time going off the clock before Taylor is finally fouled with 1.18 to go. But I like it, you know, when you first inbound it, especially to the corner, the defense, you're like thinking, all right, maybe I can get a steal here. And then when you don't, you go for the foul. Clark back in. Celeste Taylor has a double-double for the second straight game. Sixth of her career, started her career at Texas, played two years with the Longhorns, made 52 starts. I showed you before how many transfers there are, and it's not so easy. You got good players, but just to make them fit together. But so far, it's happened for Duke. As Rebecca mentioned, Duke's been so good on the offensive glass. And they get a second one here. Will Iowa foul a do with Marshall? Been the theme all night long. Jade Williams wasn't able to corral it herself, but we've seen Duke do that all night. Just, all right, I can't get it, but I'm gonna tip it and keep it alive. Day Wilson at the free throw line. <laughs> Iowa might be working on some box <laughs> drills. Yeah. Frustrating trip so far to North Carolina for Iowa. <laughs> Dave Wilson with 19 points tonight for the Blue Devils. Clark to Sinano. <laughs> 21 now for Monica Sinano. And Martin gets whistled for the foul. Inside of a minute now to go in an 11 point game. Iowa's next game will be the Big Ten opener on Sunday in Iowa City. Then they're at Iowa State, the big rivalry game on Wednesday. Big Ten well represented in the top 20, Indiana. Sixth loss today to NC State. Maryland, Iowa, Michigan. Iowa State. But it hasn't been a great week. Michigan losing to Louisville tonight. We saw Iowa State go down. 12 point game. Clark again with the push. Again to find a Sinano. Again a rebound for Duke. Taylor trying to dribble out of trouble. And at this stage, if you're Iowa, when you come down on the offensive end, you got to start looking for threes. You're going to play the foul game, and Duke makes one or two. You can't just go down looking for twos. That's four fouls on Martin for Iowa. Duke is a plus 10 in rebounding margin here tonight as Taylor goes back to the line. Clark has to take a deep three. Won't go. Taylor's got another rebound. And another foul is called, this time on Warnock. 
And the crowd makes a little bit more noise here after getting the stop on one end, getting ready to celebrate a Duke victory. Credit the students for coming out too. Tomorrow's the last day of classes before their reading week and then finals. Duke will be at Penn in the Palestra on Sunday. Men's team's hung around here. They're suffering a tough loss to Ohio State. Here rooting on the women's team. And plenty to cheer on here for Duke. Another tough one on the schedule coming up for Duke, by the way. They will host number one South Carolina on December 15th. Certainly we saw a lot today that Duke can work with. They continue to grow. Rebound pulled down by Duke, and now Iowa will back off, and the crowd will let you know what's happened here tonight. Blue Devils have taken down a top 10 team. Number nine, Iowa falls to Duke. signature win early on in the head coaching career for Kara Lawson here at Duke. Largest margin of victory against a top 10 team in program history.